Being a private label seller does not mean you have to buy all your products from China. I drank the Kool-Aid on this for many years, and in this video, I'll share with you four sources to unlock profitable PL products for your Amazon FBA business right here in the United States. So let's do this. My name is Carlos Alvarez, and I'm a full-time Amazon seller of 15 years, co-host of the Wizards of Ecom podcast, and founder of the largest Amazon seller meetup group in the world. I've been sourcing products from China as a full-time Amazon seller for 15 years. For years, I have told every single person who has asked me that unless you are sourcing food or supplement products, that sourcing from the US was extremely cost prohibitive. What cost you $5,000 in China would cost you hundreds of thousands in the US and minimum order quantities even worse. They were in the hundreds of thousands instead of one to 2000 pieces. I'm here to tell you public service announcement. I am sorry, I could not have been more wrong. My first eye opener was over a decade ago. I was selling these desiccated polymer gel beads. These are these tiny desiccated slivers of polymer, which when you put them in contact with water, they can expand to like 20 X their size or more. I was selling this brand of humidors at the time. So I used these as kind of like humidification devices in my humidors. Uh, obviously I sourced the label, the jar and these humidification beads from China. This was like 400,000 a year in revenue by itself. Plus it allowed me to sell the humidors for even more because I was adding it as like a little value add item inside my humidors. So one day I'm going on to go place another order and imagine my complete shock when I see an email from the supplier saying they have completely cut me off and they have decided to compete against me selling directly on Amazon. At the time I thought, okay, you know, that's it. Uh, this income stream is completely destroyed. But in the warehouse, I still had a lot more polymer beads in stock and I was short on jars. So I start looking around domestically thinking I have a pretty good chance of being able to locate some jars. And, and sure enough, I find a, a local manufacturer that of, you know, has warehouses full of jars and I'm going to go have a meeting with them because I want to see like, oh, can you put my label on it? Are you going to be able to ship it? Just, just kind of like introducing ourselves to see if I can buy jars from them so that I can just package up the remaining beads I had in the warehouse and sell them. So there I am, I'm, I'm just sitting in the waiting room, waiting to be called on to you know talk about jars. And I see this flower vase in front of me. The flower vase is full of polymer gel beads. And the only difference is where mine were slivers. These were these like perfect spheres and they were full of water. I remember I walked up kind of in shock and I'm like, why, like, why am I seeing polymer gel beads everywhere? And I reach my hand in the vase and I grab it. And I'm like, sure enough, that's what these things are. Quickly, I get my phone and I'm going on Amazon and I'm like, wait a minute, like, is there another application for this that I have no idea? And I look on Amazon and sure enough, within the gardening space, there's an, a completely different use for these products that I had no idea of. Even better news for me is that the listings that I was looking at on Amazon said made in the USA. Three phone calls later, I was chatting with a factory in Vermont who manufactures this stuff and they were extremely happy to work with me. They had low MOQs and I was back in business by the end of that same week. An extraordinarily uh, interesting side note that I didn't even notice until many, many months later is that Matt, who's a friend of mine to this day who owns the factory, he's the actual supplier of the factory in China who I was buying the stuff from, assuming that they manufactured these polymer gel beads. I wish I could tell you from that point on, I sourced exclusively from the US and I told everyone who asked me how sourcing from the US could be easily done, but unfortunately, that is not what I did. Full transparency sourcing products from the US only works for certain types of products. If you're sourcing electronics, glass, ceramic, and several other material types, then China is still going to be the absolute number one place in the world for you to sort these sorts of products. The reason for this is pretty obvious. China has a huge concentration of skilled labor and still has um, pretty low labor cost uh, as it is compared to, you know, with everywhere else in the world. If you're like most sellers, though, you're extremely product agnostic and it doesn't matter what sort of product you sell. It could be paper clips. It could be peanut butter. As long as the product cash flow is positive, then you're game. As a matter of fact, the most popular advice when it comes to sourcing products is to find something that, you know, weighs less than two pounds, is not fragile. Competitors do not have too many reviews, yada, yada, yada. If this is how you source your PL products, then I highly recommend adding Made in the USA to your filters. And once you've done that, perhaps leveraging one or more of the four sources that I'm about to share with you now so you can source your next profitable PL. Number one on this list is ThomasNet. ThomasNet has to go first. They are the OGs in this space. Think of ThomasNet as this like cool online hangout where manufacturers and buyers can just meet and mingle. On ThomasNet, you're going to find factories that are 
based in the US and Canada. So as long as you don't mind sourcing from either one of those countries, ThomasNet is great. What is also really great about ThomasNet is it is 100% free. You easily can just go on the platform, you know, search for the type of product you're looking for, the type of manufacturer you're looking for. It'll surface and you could just start messaging with that factory or, or reach out and email them almost immediately. As a matter of fact, had I known about ThomasNet when my China factory cut me off, I could have easily found several suppliers of polymer gel beads, jars, and whatever else I needed to source. Massive plus for me as well is that these factories work on my time zone, so no more needing to stay up all night communicating with China on Alibaba or WeChat. Number two on this list is Maker's Row. Imagine like an Amazon-like marketplace, but just for US-based manufacturers. Maker's Row is 100% about American craftsmanship. The site focuses exclusively on the US and is a phenomenal place to get great low MOQs and speak with a lot of different factories so you can find a good fit for you. Besides low MOQs and a killer network of US-based factories, my favorite parts about Maker's Row is actually their sampling and consultation services. Sometimes I need a prototype for my factory or I need some sort of functional model of the product to use in a Kickstarter campaign and Maker's Row has always been able to come through for me on this with their sampling program. Another super cool feature uh, of Maker's Row is their consultation service. So if I'm unsure about how best to approach a project with a factory, or I want to explore you know, additional material types that I can use for a product to save money on tariffs, I can pay for their consulting service and get it solved within a couple days. The downside is Maker's Row is a paid service. So if you're looking for just free resources, this is not one of them. Uh, good news though, is that if you want to unlock their most powerful features, it's something like under 50 bucks a month. Number three on the list is WitRec. So ThomasNet and Maker's Row are marketplace-like platforms for factories. WitRec is more of a, a service provider or a service provider network that specializes in sourcing profitable products from Mexico. Since Mexico is just a stone's throw away from the US, Mexico's super attractive to source products from. However, since there's no Alibaba-like directory of factories in Mexico, trying to find and negotiate with a factory in Mexico is extraordinarily difficult in comparison to China. WitRec can solve all of it for you. So you just reach out to WitRec it's a uh, witrek.com. I'll link to it below. And you just let them know what you're looking for. They find the best factory for you. While they do specialize in apparel, uh, so if apparel is your thing, they are perfect. They can find any other product that you're looking for in Mexico. And their pay per performance in a way, which I think is super cool. So they'll locate the factory for you. If they can't find what you're looking for in a factory, then you don't pay them. However, when they do, their fee starts coming in by way of very similar to a sourcing agent, but with a project management fee built on just because working with China, you may be able to get away without having a project manager in place, but working with Mexico, it's totally different. There's a lot more moving parts. It's a lot less a la carte. So. Uh, working with someone who understands Mexican manufacturing is a huge plus, and WitRec does absolutely amazing with this. Number four is PLMA, uh, Private Label Manufacturers Association. So PLMA is by far my favorite way to find US-based factories. It's a massive show with thousands of USA-based factories that are exhibiting and that wanna work with you. I attend this show religiously every single year, and if someone told me, hey, you can only, you know that thing where like, if you're going to an island, you can only take one thing with you, what would it be? Well, for me, if I had, if somebody said, you got to take away all the conferences you attend, you can only attend one, PLMA would be the conference that I attend. What's super unique about this show is the exhibitors are all factories that have their own brands and they basically want to use their machinery during their downtime to help other businesses create their own private labels, which means these factories usually have low MOQs. They understand the importance of packaging and are absolutely accustomed to working with e-com sellers. It's not a free event. Tickets for the event are $400. Uh, to me, when you pay $400 to get into an event, that's pretty amazing because it lets the exhibitors know like, hey, this person's serious. It kind of changes the dynamic. So when you're talking to someone, they're ready to do business with you. It's not like, ah, oh, is this person gonna waste my time? They're not gonna spend any money. I enjoy those shows that have a, a ticket price to get in. This one's $400. The $400 gets you this catalog, which in and of itself is worth $1,000. So like, if you go to our Facebook group, which is Wizards of Ecom, if you go to the files section, two of the previous years that we've attended, we scan the catalog and we add it in there. So if you go to the file section and you look for PLMA, you're going to see all these USA based factories that I have found in PLMA conferences and you can just reach out to them and work with them. Uh, Facebook group's free to join, so feel free to check that out. One of my best friends, Tom, launched two brands 
which he discovered the factories for in PLMA last November. And this show happens every single November. So a large group of us from Wizards of Ecom, we go as a group there. It's free. You're welcome to attend. Consider this a personal invitation to join me and the group on these trips. By the way, we have a free Telegram group chat, which is like our travelers chat for all the conferences that we do travel together. No charge to be part of that as well. I'd love to walk the show with you, officially meet you. And I hope this video dropped a lot of value for you. Take a second to subscribe and I hope you enjoy the rest of the videos on the channel.